Hello, all of you gamers, professional and casual out there in the world. I am Mega Amster. Thank you for being here and clicking on this video. If you're new here, hey, great to have you here. Thank you for being here. If you're a returning viewer, hey, always good to see you here. Thank you for the continued support over time. So I said I was going to do this video. I just saw the Super Mario Brothers movie by Illumination and Nintendo last night. So 24, not less than 24 hours later, actually. It was like later at night. It was at 9 p.m. I think it was a showing on a Friday night being last night as of this recording. Um, so not like ridiculously fresh off the plate, but still fairly, you know, like I said, less than 24 hours. And just wanted to give my overall thoughts. We're going to start with spoiler free. And then honestly, most of it's probably going to be spoiler free. There's not a ton that I want to talk about that's like super in-depth spoilers, except for like one particular thing I could think of um, or a couple things I can think of. But uh, for the most part, I will let you know when that happens. For now, we're going to start off with no major spoilers. I mean, there's going to be some spoilers in terms of like different performances and stuff like that. So if you don't want to, if you want to avoid everything spoiler free, then like just probably best to uh, not watch this review but with that let's just jump right into what i thought of the overall movie overall thoughts just starting now for that just throwing it out there it was really fun it was a really fun watch i went with some of my friends and you know some some of them are more familiar with mario than others uh but everyone seemed to enjoy it myself included it was just a very fun watch like i would personally give it like a solid eight out of ten a lot of really just fun moments there um here's the thing for me right i i really enjoy mario i've played almost all the main games at this point not a lot of the spin-off ones but the main games sure but i'm not this huge mario fan but like i still really appreciate the games and like the different like enemy designs and the environments and stuff um and i gotta say the environments in this movie were really good like my expectations were quite low for a while when the movie was first announced i'm like oh it's gonna be illumination like i don't know if this is gonna be good like i don't know what to expect um so already just like based off of that my you know my expectations were quite low but i gotta say it, i was pleasantly surprised you know um going in i've heard some reviews that said oh people some liked it some didn't and it's like the critic reviews haven't been great but like i also i don't think this is this is not if this movie's not aimed at critics at all um go into that more later but for now just like yeah the environments were honestly great um the mushroom kingdom itself and the real world Brooklyn part of things is, you know, both were kind of interesting. I honestly, like, I liked, it was weird because I wasn't sure how I'd feel about, like, the Brooklyn stuff, but I ended up actually enjoying that quite more than I was expecting, um, you know, in terms of, like, how they start off there and then they go to the Mushroom Kingdom. We know all that from the trailers, um, and that was honestly not too bad. I was I was surprised with how well it, they handled it. It wasn't the most amazing cinematic experience, let's say that, but it was still, I thought it was ha handled pretty well. Um, and one thing that's great is about this movie is that you really get to, like, see, um, Mario and Luigi as, like, you know, like, you get to see their brotherly bond a lot in this movie, um, and I mean, that goes into the performances, but, like, that's not something that we see a lot of the time in Mario games, especially. It's, like, that's what is great about a movie like this is that like you know they have to make a story out of it they have to expand upon it you know they couldn't do that before um or they did they chose not to do that before in some of the games but here they kind of have to to fit into that movie kind of uh general structure but yeah no i definitely i really appreciate how much they were bonding together and they showed they had a very close connection at the beginning of the movie and then it kind of you see it build throughout um and so yeah the environments the setup was really good going kind of leaning more towards again the voice performances when they announced it like a year and a half ago at least for the u.s version who would be doing the voices i mean like i don't think i think everybody was taking it as a joke in terms of just like obviously it was real but like what the hell what chris pratt is mario jack black is bowser seth rogan is donkey like, what like super weird um but i have to say across the board not everybody was fantastic for sure highlights for me the highlight for me was Jack Black as Bowser. Like, he was so good. He had a lot of funny moments. They made it so Bowser, he's not super serious. He's kind of got, like, that goofy persona a little bit to him that he has, and especially in some of the spinoff games from what I've heard, like the Mario and Luigi series and Paper Mario and all those. Like, he has a very... Yeah, he can be serious when he means business, but he's also kind of goofy. You know, he has that goofy side to him, which I think makes him more of an interesting villain. And, I mean, Jack Black just kind of nailed that with Bowser. Um, also, I gotta say, Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. I know it's literally okay. All I wanted, I did like. I know maybe it's not super accurate to the character, but like, 
I just wanted Seth Rogen, but a monkey. And that's what we got. And so I'm happy with that. There were some moments that were just stupid. And like, obviously it just sounded like Seth Rogen, but it was like, it was funny. I liked it. Um, Charlie Day's Luigi, really good. Um, Keegan-Michael Key is Toad. I actually did enjoy quite a bit. Um, he didn't show up as much in the movies I was expecting, but like his voice performance was actually pretty solid. Chris Pratt is Mario. All right, let's go into that. Let's go into that. It was much better than I was expecting. So looking at the trailers and watching the different trailers, I watched them all up to release. I was just kind of like, you know, like this probably isn't going to be that good. You know, they announced it when they first announced it. I was like, what the fuck? And then we saw the trailers and it was like, it just didn't sound, obviously it wasn't like Mario, but it's like, how do you do Mario right? You know, the only way would be with Charles Martinet, the voice from the games, who is, he does have a couple cameos in the movie, by the way. Um, I won't say what, but yeah, like that would be tough to just have Charles Martinet do the, like the wahoo and the let's go, let's go for the whole movie. You know what I mean? Like, so I think what they had, what they had was actually pretty solid. Like in the trailer cuts, it just, it, I think because they were individual moments, they just didn't seem as good. But honestly, like, especially establishing that voice with the Brooklyn section in the beginning, and then as you go through the movie, it was like, honestly, it was pretty, I think it was pretty solid for what it was. Um, he actually, he wasn't the worst voice performance. Um, I don't know if, well, they already announced the voice cast. Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong, man. I, it was just weird for me. I didn't like Fred Armisen's Cranky Kong. It just didn't really, it's probably because I'm used to the character from the country games. And it's like, eh, it was like, he just felt like a, a new character. So honestly, I liked him a lot less than more. Now, Chris Pratt wasn't one of the standouts for me, for sure. Like, I'm, like I said, Jack Black um, and Seth Rogen and Bowser, Donkey Kong respectively were great. Um, Charlie Day was also very, very good, I must say. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy's Peach, I think she did a pretty good job. I know I've seen the complaints about, like, Peach being too much of, like, a girl boss, quote-unquote, in this movie. And, like, just, like, not being, like, that character she's in the games. And true, she's not, like, herself in the game. She's way more capable in the movie, for sure. Not that she hasn't been capable in certain games of Mario, but it's definitely... They went... Illumination went all in in the movie. And I don't think that's a bad thing, because I think, especially if you're targeting this game towards kids, I think it's important to kind of send that message that, you know, women and men can be equally powerful, you know what I mean? They can hold their own, you know, whereas you look at the old damsel in distress, especially the early, early games with Mario, it's like, that's just not a fun thing to interpret on the big screen. I will say, like, it'd be, it would have been fun if she had, like, some of that, like, daintiness to her personality that she has in some of the games still. Um, but like, I thought, I thought they did good. And Anya, uh, Anya Taylor Joy as Peach, she did really well for uh, the script she was given. Um, so that was good. Like, honestly, like the voice cast surprised me. I actually ended up enjoying it more than I thought I would. So that was great. Um, like I said, the environments were great. Um, the one major complaint for me that I will say is that it felt, it was only like an hour and a half. Like it honestly wasn't that long, which you could say is refreshing, but I feel like for me personally, scenes went by very fast, and so I think they really could have made it like a two, like they added an extra 20 minutes onto it and kind of just like connected the pieces a little more because some of those scenes were very short. And so it would have been nice to have a little more connective tissue um, to make it just a little less just sudden. That's how I felt personally. Um, is that it was very very fast and maybe it could have used a little bit of a <laughs> it could have used a little bit of extra something to kind of keep it going you know excuse me but yeah honestly like that's my only major complaint about the movie it wasn't it wasn't like the most amazing movie i've ever seen and that's fine it was very good and i think as long as this movie was good like it's gonna do super well at the box office we already have ideas about you know we've seen reports of this movie being like the best the best opening weekend for an animated film of all time like it, and that's not surprising you know the movies at least needed to be good to achieve that and it seems like it is so that's great and I'm trying to get other things the music was great um there was one scenario that i saw in which they replaced a uh, license or they replaced an original composition that was a reference to another game with a license track i saw that earlier on twitter today i was like are you kidding me like oh my god um but otherwise the music's good the licensed music isn't it doesn't really fit a lot of the... Uh, it just feels like they use this popular licensed music for the sake of using it. Um, but the orchestral rearrangements of, like, the Mario themes, you can hear so many of them throughout the movie, little Easter eggs and stuff, and it's so good. It is... The music is great. I think Koji Kondo directly worked on those, and that's awesome. Um, so I definitely... The music was great. Um, like I said, it looked really good. The character performances, honestly, were pretty solid. The story wasn't anything to, like, write home about. It wasn't, like, the most mind-blowing story of all time. But it did a really good job of establishing 
you know, kind of an origin, if you will, for Mario in this film universe to go to the Mushroom Kingdom and kind of, you know, help take down Bowser and save, you know, help with Princess Peach and stuff like that. Um, and so I thought that was really good, you know, for what they had to work with. I think it was pretty solid. Um, what's really cool about this movie is there are a lot, like a lot of references to older Nintendo properties, not even just Mario, but even other, like literally ones, like super obscure stuff that you would never think of. Um, I won't say what they are here, just to, you know, leave a little bit of a surprise, but um, I could see this movie being one that you go to see multiple times in theaters, specifically to catch all the little references and things that pop up. Um, I caught a few of them, but there was some that my friends mentioned. I was like, Wait, what the hell? This was here? I didn't even notice that, you know? But um, those references were really cool. I mean, even like what they do, like in terms of the character interactions, not even just background elements, like there are things that like very subtle things from like certain Mario games that like you wouldn't know unless you've played the game. So that was super cool. Um, I don't know. There's just, there was a lot of, clearly there was a lot of love and care put into this movie. Um, which I think is definitely due to Nintendo having a very heavy involvement, Miyamoto and the Nintendo team having a huge involvement in the film. And without them, I, <laughs> without them, this movie would have been really bad, I think. With Nintendo's help, like Illumination's got the experience with animated films targeted towards kids and with their animation work and like their style and stuff and the visuals. Nintendo has the IP and the fact that they got so heavily involved, I think was definitely the right move Especially, I mean, the original live action movie, right? I don't think they were much involved at all. And <laughs> look how that went. So it was great for them to be involved to make this just a really great Mario movie for Mario fans. So I don't really have too much else to say that's non-spoilers. Um, but just to kind of wrap this up in terms of like overall, um, one thing that I was thinking of that's been on my mind, especially after the movie, is who is this movie for, right? Because we've seen, well, um, online, I've personally seen, and maybe you have too. Um, critic reviews are not great for this film. It's just getting middling reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and other critic review sites for these films. And it's honestly, it's not scoring that well. The audience score is definitely up there, but the critic, critics are not scoring it super well. And I mean, if you think about it, right, this film, I mean, most people know about Mario is the thing, but if so let's say you've been living under a rock and you don't know anything about Mario and you're going to just see this film as an adult movie critic, you're not gonna like this film. You're not going to. Like, it's not the most amazing film out there, you know? But I think it's a really fun watch if A, you are A, like an actual, like a Nintendo Mario fan, or B, you're a kid, one of the two. And that's kind of why part of me, going back to the uh, the duration of the film, like part of me is wondering if it was specifically an hour and a half roughly to keep it short because kids just don't have that long of attention spans. It's definitely a possibility. Um, but they're definitely appealing to kids. There are going to be a lot of kids who grow up watching this film and will get to know Mario because of that. Now, I don't know if they're going to make a movie tie-in game. Probably not, honestly, at this point. I don't think they will. I'll be curious to see what they take from the film and put into the games. I don't know if there's going to be any kind of carry over there. It'd be cool to see some of that. Um, just not Chris Pratt voicing Mario in the games. Please, we can avoid that. Um, but it'll be curious to see what that happens. But like literally, like if you're either a kid who just likes watching dumb, fun movies, or if you're a Nintendo and maybe specifically a Mario fan, I think you will get a lot out of this. Because like I said, there's a lot of Easter eggs, there's a lot of references. And if you played some of the games, you'll probably pick up on them. But like if you're an adult who doesn't really know Mario, you haven't played the games or anything, you're just kind of like going to see the movie, especially if like, like you're reviewing it as a critic, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You're not going to, it's not, it's definitely not the best animated movie out there. You know, it's not the most cinematic masterpiece. You know what I mean? I, I mean, obviously I'm very biased and I, you know, you guys know my opinions on Sonic and like this, I enjoy this movie. I think it's tough. Cause like as a Mario movie, honestly, this is better than at least this first Sonic movie. Maybe even the second. They really respect the source material highly, and I think it's because Nintendo was so involved in the process. Not to say I didn't enjoy Sonic Movie 2, and they had a lot more references to Sonic in the Sonic Movie 2. It felt more like a Sonic movie. I mentioned that before. But this, this, there was so much love and care put into the Mario IP representation in this film that I would honestly say, as a Mario film, it might technically be better. It also helps that it's animated rather than live action like the Sonic ones are. But I personally, I mean, I still love the Sonic movie too more. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's just kind of my my general non-spoiler thoughts on it. Really enjoyed it. Like I said, the voice cast surprised me positively. That was great. Movie looks really good in motion. Um, 
all the little references are great. Just the main gripes for me, mainly the the length. I think it could have been a little bit longer. It was a little too fast paced, um, for sure. And yeah, otherwise, I mean, yeah, it wasn't the most amazing film, like I said, but it was still a really fun watch. I'm glad I got to see it in theaters because originally I was thinking I was just gonna skip out on it, but I'm glad I went. So there are my non-spoiler thoughts. Um, like I said, I don't have a ton of spoiler specific thoughts, but I'm just gonna mention it right here. Stop watching now if you do not want to be spoiled on specific things, including the post post credit scene of the Mario movie. All right, you ready? We're going to do a countdown. Five, four, three, two. All right, all right, here we go. Spoilers. Spoilers are now live. Okay, so like I said, not a lot, just a few things. Um, <laughs> there's one scene in the Kong Kingdom. First of all, the song I was talking about that was replaced, there was a, don't you go, they, um, like Mario and Peach and Toad go to the Kong Kingdom like halfway through the film and to recruit the Kong army. And they literally, they're going into the Kong and it's super cool because they're all in carts and stuff like that, like Mario Kart. But I found on Twitter today, they were supposed to play like a remix of the Donkey Kong like jungle theme from Donkey Kong Country during that, like an orchestral remix. And I was like, this sounds great. They replaced it with Take On Me. And I'm like, I love Take On Me. Don't get me wrong, but why the hell is it here? That was really weird. I don't know, I'm not a fan of that, but in the movie it worked okay for what it was. Um, but there was one scene in the Kong Kingdom. It's during the fight with Mario and Donkey Kong. Mario gets a certain power up. I won't say which one. Um, because that might be that wasn't shown in the trailers, so I won't sh I won't say which one. Um, but <laughs> he gets a power up that doesn't really work out to Mario's advantage, and Donkey Kong just leans up, looks at him, and does the iconic Seth Rogen <laughs> laugh right in his face, and literally the entire theater, myself included, were dying laughing. It was I I was literally crying. It was so I, Seth Rogen's laugh is just so iconic, and like they knew what they were doing. Like literally, Donkey Kong is just Seth Rogen in a gorilla body. It's like, it's it's great, it's perfect, I love it. Um, so that, that one moment broke me. Another moment that broke me in the whole theater too was um, there's a couple moments where Jack Black's Bowser um, does like a piano song, like a piano um, to like, in like Peach's honor. And cause he's like, obviously the whole idea is he's, you know, they still have the fact that he wants to marry her in this film. That's a big thing. Um, and so he's like playing the piano, like to sing along with like, and making a song about her. And it's like, it was so, it was so, because it's literally just Jack Black singing about Peach. And it, it's so good. It's so good. There were a couple instances of it and it was great. Uh, like I said, like Bowser's very goofy in this film. He can be, he's menacing when he wants to be, but he's also goofy, which is great to see. You know what I mean? So it adds way more character to him personally. So I loved that. Um, like I said, there were so many different kinds of references there. I won't say which games, but a lot, even just like outside of Nintendo. So that was super cool. Um, Mario's even playing an old game at one point on his NES. I won't say what game it is, but there's a little reference there. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here. That's honestly just makes it really fun. Like I said, mainly if you're a Mario fan, you're going to get a kick out of this in terms of all the references and stuff. And if you love the series, and even if you're a kid, I think it's a fun kids animated film. Like it's definitely... I would say it's more harmless than a lot of other Illumination films. So, I mean, and, and if you like Illumination too, you might like this too, you know? So there's that. Um, I'm trying to think of any other spoilers before I talk about the post post credit scene. Not that I can think of, you know, not that I can think of. There's just a lot of cool references there. So post post credit scene spoilers, putting that up right now, okay? My initial thinking going into this was it was gonna be Rosalina because of the Luma that we saw in the trailers in prison with everybody, the little <laughs> existential crisis Luma, the sweet release of death Luma. And I figured, oh, we're gonna see Rosalina. No. So it turns out, like I said, spoilers up. I warned you like five times already. Turns out there is one scene in the movie when there, this is one of those fast paced, we saw it in one trailer where they're walking through different environments and you see a bunch of Yoshis kind of by the river, you know, kind of similar to like the melee intro, but you never see the main Yoshi, like the green Yoshi from the other games. So whenever Yoshi is like a, in an integral role in the games, you don't, you never see that Yoshi until the post post credit scene where they pan in and they show the Yoshi egg hatching and it goes Yoshi and then it ends and people were clapping. Everybody was happy. I don't know. Mm, see, 
I feel like they easily just could have put Yoshi in this film. So it feels weird to me to have that be like the, the little tease of like the next like movie. I mean, there's gonna be a sequel, you know? There's totally gonna be a sequel. So it's weird to kind of have Yoshi as the tease. I feel like Rose and Lena would have been a really cool fit, but I mean, maybe they have a plan in terms of where they want to go, but I don't know. It just, it feels, it wasn't like anything super crazy. You know what I mean? Especially because we already saw Yoshi like existing in the world and it's like, it was only a matter of time for Yoshi to show up, but I, they could have easily done it in this film. So I'm kind of curious why they didn't. Um, but it's still cool nonetheless, you know? So, and like, I was actually part of me, like while we were watching it, I was like, I don't know if there's even going to be a post credit scene or a post post credit scene at that. You know what I mean? So that was that cool little nod that they had in there. Now, who knows what'll happen um, in terms of like, in the future, if they'll actually, <laughs> they'll make it. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll make a sequel, but at that point, I guess Yoshi will be in it and Rosalina will have to see. I don't know. It depends on what else they pull from. I, personally, Wario Waluigi would be awesome. We're never going to get Waluigi on a movie, but it'd be cool. It'd be cool. Yeah, Wario for sure. I, I feel like Wario's inevitable. We'll see. Maybe he'll be like the main antagonist next movie or something. That'd be cool. Like a little Super Mario Land 2 reference. I don't know. But this movie was very good. This movie was very good. There were a few things, like I said, that were not huge complaints from me. But I wouldn't say it was overall like an amazing film. It was just a really fun watch. And if you're at all curious about the movie, go give it a watch. I would totally recommend it. It's really... It's really a fun time. If you're looking for a cinematic masterpiece, don't go watch Sonic Movie 2. No, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't think you're going to find a video game adaptation out there. That's like a, a cinematic masterpiece. Probably not. Uh, but it's just a really fun watch. So if you're, you know, at all curious, I'd recommend it. If you're a kid or you have kids or you're a Mario fan or a Nintendo fan in general, I'd give it a watch. I honestly would. It's a really fun time. Illumination Nintendo honestly surprised me with how good this film ended up being and how much I enjoyed watching it. The voice cast, like I said, it seemed like a joke at first, but honestly, I, I know they're getting kind of some flack online, but I think they did a good job. I think it could have been a lot worse. Does it feel like they're just putting celebrities in those roles? Sure, but for that being the case, I think it's still really good. So I'd give it a watch if you're at all interested, but with that, I'm gonna end this video off before it gets too long. Thank you all for watching if you did. Um, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Let's try to keep the comments spoiler free at least. Um, just cause you know, cause I don't want people to be spoiled on things like for example, the post post credit scene. I don't want people to be spoiled on it. If I see spoilers, I'm probably gonna delete your comment just a heads up. Um, I just wanna keep that spoiler free for people if possible so they can experience that for themselves. If you wanna talk about spoilers, hey, we have a Discord community for all kinds of stuff that we like to talk about, especially when it comes to video games and stuff like that. And you want to check that out we got a little link in the description below in case you're interested feel free to follow me on twitter too that's where i will post just random shit mostly <laughs> but also like occasional like live stream scheduling and stuff um which currently as of now i am well i'm not even halfway through bayonetta origin stories and the lost demon but that's kind of what i'm doing out now i'm going to be taking a little bit of a break for in a little bit until the tears of the kingdom comes out um in about a month as of this recording um but i will be wrapping up bayonetta origin so if you want to watch that feel free to check that out on the channel but hey otherwise I will catch you all in the next video or live stream. Like I said, let me know what your thoughts are on the Mari movie in the comments below. And hey, we're in an era. A lot of good video game movies coming out. We'll see what the future has in store, especially with the Nintendo movies. We'll see if they go any farther. Maybe Zelda, Kirby, I would love. Just give me a movie. All I want, Nintendo. Give me a movie. Kirby eating a cheesecake for an hour and a half. You're welcome. Pay me. Goodbye.